catch or a year in playing catch? Yep, year playing catch. Yeah. Why catch? Tell me what sparked this topic for you. Um, well, I, I have loved playing catch my whole life. Uh, but I stopped playing uh, baseball when I was 16 years old. I was a, a sophomore at Kickapoo. I just, uh, I hadn't hit my growth spurt yet. Everyone else was bigger, taller, and I was stronger. And, and my skills just w weren't up to par. Um, and then, uh, so fast forward, uh, you know, a few decades. And and my family lives here in town. I have two daughters. And, and my uh, I played I played catch with both of them on, on uh, January 1st, 2018 in response to a, a baseball that my youngest daughter, who's an artist, had given me um, for Christmas and uh, at, at dinner on January 1st, like, Dad, what would happen if you played catch every day for a year? <laughs> and I just started laughing and I sh shook my head and I said, I would need surgery. This is what would happen. And they were the ones who were um, who encouraged me and kind of goaded me, prodded me into the effort. And so I spent all of 2018 playing catch and now I can't get enough. Very cool. So I actually thought it was going to be the other way around. I was <laughs> thinking you were going to say, yeah, I played catch with my maybe boys. You know, they were into ball. And I love that your daughters did this. And yep. it was their idea. So tell me some of the things that resulted from a year of playing catch. Oh, goodness. Well, we took uh, two 10-day road trips across the United States, uh, put on about 12,000 miles on the car. Um, we were, uh, so I played catch in uh, 10 different states, had 500 different partners, had some just amazing people that I met, uh, pe people who are not strangers who reached out to me, who are now friends that I, that I still play, uh, still, still keep in touch with to this day. And um, I think one of the biggest things that, that have just, I, I learned um, just as I continue to process it, uh, it in the years since is, is how important it is to play especially as we age yeah, um, yeah and and you know it's easy if you're eight ten years old to you know take a break and go hop on a bike or jump on a trampoline or something like that but as as we get older and we and life is way down with responsibilities and stresses and you know growing up um, we forget how necessary playing is to being human and when we stop playing it, the, the ramifications, not only just on our physical body, but uh, on our, our mental health, yeah. uh, on our spiritual health, it, it, it takes, it takes a toll. And so, uh, you know, I, I carry gloves with me practically everywhere I go, just in case I run into somebody and say, Hey, step out here on the lawn, play, come play pitch with me. That was one of my questions too. Is it always a glove and softball, baseball, or do you ever play catch with a basketball or a speedball ball? I don't know. <laughs> um, for me, uh, a baseball and a glove is most comfortable. Um, every now and then I'll throw a football, but I got really small hands. And, and so football, I, I can catch a football, but I'm awful at throwing a football. Uh, a frisbee, a frisbee is another yeah. fantastic catch playing implement. But but for me personally, uh, it's it's ninety nine percent of the time it's it's a ball and glove. How far into the first year of, of playing catch did you realize that you could turn this into a book, or that you would, <laughs> you know, well, jot um, down the notes of it all? Yeah, the <laughs> the interesting thing is is when the year started, I was actually working on two different writing projects, and so. so um, on, on that, on that first day of the year, I took a selfie with my daughter, posted it on the blog and, and, and you know, probably wrote three sentences. And then, so my very first game of catch was with Sophie. She's my youngest. And then that afternoon I played catch with Kaylee. She's my, my oldest, took another selfie, put it on a blog, wrote a couple sentences and that was it. Um, and as it so happened throughout the year, I took selfies and posted it on the blog every day but really never thought about writing a book until uh, I was 200 days into it and played catch with a guy who has a, who has a podcast, the Moonlight Graham show up in, in Iowa. And he, the last question he asked me, he said, so are you going to write about it? And I was like, all right, I will, I promise you, if I, if I successfully complete the year, I'll write about it. And that's when I first, that was when I first started thinking about it. And it still took me another year to, 
to figure out how to actually write the write the story. So did you ever have a day where you were sick as a dog and you could you had to take a day off? You found some way to, no. to play. I no, I was never sick. I was healthy. You lucky years. dog. I mean <laughs> I mean, I mean just exactly right. I mean, I don't even I think that the 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 only I, I had a little bit of allergies and that was it. But, but I mean, that's one of the things you look back on. It's like, I, I made it a year without even really feeling that. And I felt sore, yeah. but I didn't feel ill. And I, I'm just very fortunate. Were you always able to find a partner? And if not, do you just play toss to your, with yourself? Or against I a ball? always found somebody. <laughs> always found somebody. Um, then there were times, uh, like when I was traveling, there were different times that I, I wanted to, um, the, the, when I initially did it, people said, well, he's going to play catch with somebody different every day. I was like, are you kidding me? I don't know 365 <laughs> different, I don't, yeah. that's not even going to happen. I'm just, I'm just giddy at the, actually I was intimidated by, by the thought of, can I even do this for a year? Yeah. And, and so when we started traveling, I mean, there were times when my daughters were my catch partners over and over again. My, and my parents, um, it was really just, can I do it? And then as uh, you know, the first three to four months were pretty challenging finding people to, to say, yes, you know, we've got Missouri weather. That was always a factor. Yeah. Um, but then it started picking up and people would reach out to me. Hey, can I can I play catch with you? Would you be willing to to meet me up? Absolutely. And and so um, you know, there were some days I played catch with multiple people. And it yeah. was it was it was a joy. It was it was awesome. Did your daughters keep you on track? Were yeah. they real good about, hey, don't forget, let's get the get the glove, let's go. Oh, oh it they they weren't the ones that came out. They mostly it was um well I I would drive them to school in the morning. And so their first question, well, who are you playing catch with today? Mm -hmm. And so some days, some days I had an answer. Some days I said, well, I'll tell you at dinner tonight. And then at dinner, I was like, All right, dad, tell us the story of who you play catch with today. And so they were the ones, um, it, it was never, you know, like, oh, dad, you got to do this. You got to do this. It was more the encouraging and supportive and we're proud of you, dad. Hey, keep up the good work. Um, you know, it was nice that they were in my corner. What did you kind of expect from a year of it? Did you think that, did you have any expectations? And what, what do you, what were they? You, just none at all? I had, I, I literally, I didn't, I've never been really good at New Year's resolutions. Yeah. And, I, and to that day, I don't, I don't, I don't think I'd actually um, completed it. And so, you know, there's, there was that thought in the back of my mind, can I even, can I even do this? Yeah. Well, I get Get through, and, and I really did think, um, you know, I was going to be injured or something would happen. I'd be like, well, it was a good, it was a good try. Um, and so it took me a long time to think that, you know, I got a chance of being successful. And, and then to actually complete the year, I, I was, you know, it was, it was one of those, hey, look what I did. Look what I can do. Yeah. I, I can, you know, and so, and so now that, that raised the, the expectations and, um, and then just the wonder of meeting people along the way. How long has the streak been going for? Um, I like I stopped. Uh, I I started on January first, two thousand eighteen, and then my daughters and I played catch on January first, two thousand nineteen, uh, right outside Coffin Stadium in Kansas City, uh, and then I took some time off because I thought I would need a break. Yeah, you know, I thought to to be healthy, you know, and this kind of stuff, and um, I started missing it immediately, and so. There, I would play catch like once a week or, or, or regularly, much more regularly than I ever did before. Um, but then just this, this last December, you know, uh, there have been people who've taken up the cause and, and, and the challenge across the country and cheering them on and encouraging and, and reading their stories and seeing the, uh, the experiences they're happy that they're having. And I was like, I'm going to do it again. So starting January 1st this year, uh, I've been going 65 days strong. Good. Congratulations. That's really neat. What has been one of the most valuable? It sounds like you've got several valuable takeaways, but what's one of the most valuable to you? Okay. Um, there, there are. There are so 
many. Um, I say that off the top of it is the opportunity to connect with someone face to face mm -hmm. and 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 have a a shared experience, and it's just it's an experience that that builds trust, that develops empathy, um, and that gives you the chance to strengthen a relationship apart from judgment. And I, I think there are there are people who are hesitant to play catch with me because they think, well, I don't throw very good, or I'm going to drop the ball, or or they, they're quick to judge themselves and their ability, whether regardless of their the, the experience that they have, and and so um, when I meet someone to play catch, one if they're if they're new, especially if you don't know, them, is um, I I want them to trust that I'm not there to hurt them. That I have no, I'm not going to throw the ball as hard as I can yeah. to hurt you. Um, and I'm not there to embarrass you or, or judge you. If you make a bad throw, the very first thing I'll say is, you know what? I still make bad throws too. It's just, it's yeah. part of it. And my goal when we're done is that you feel encouraged and that you feel like you've had just that little bit of a break and you can go on and, and, and face whatever's next with uh, a little bit of joy. Yeah, that is a great one. And I think you're right. Sports can be very intimidating, but I think it's also a fantastic yeah. confidence builder. And you can get some self-esteem yeah. going when you've got someone that's willing to take the time and connect with you. So what are some of the amazing yeah. conversations that you had when you played catch every day? You, you can't even imagine it, what the the neat part and the humbling part is um it it seems to be an activity that that does build trust and so those those walls that we we are quick to build up or, or put up or those masks that we wear to to keep people at, at a distance uh are quickly put aside so you know um you you get people who say well did you know that i'm a cancer survivor or people who say, you know, I recently lost someone in my family, and this is actually therapeutic for me, and and just it is it is stories that literally run the the breadth and depth of the human experience, and it people just want that chance to share and to be heard, and and know that um, that they're just not going to be pushed aside at the, the next you know, tweet or the next ding or the next text or whatever, that that this is a, a connection um, and a celebration of what it means to be human. So I, I have heard all the stories and some of them I just hold close and I'm like, I can't believe you just shared that. And, you know, in, instead of laughing and giving high fives and taking the selfie, sometimes a game ends with a big hug Aww. and they say, thanks for letting me get that off my chest. I'm like, I'm honored to be here. Boy. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, have, have a lot of these people went on to start their own challenge and keep the, uh, some, the yeah, there's, uh, there, there've been some locally, uh, there've been some that I've never played catch with yet to date that I'm hoping to, to connect with at some point this summer and just say, Hey, it was fun cheering you on. Um, there was one guy, um, uh, he is from Washington. Uh, and, and in the, the summer of 22, uh, August 22, he uh, he was Mariners is a Mariners fan, and the Mariners were playing in Kansas City, and he said, um, I'll, I'll buy a ticket to the game for you and your wife if you'll come up here and play catch with me right in the middle oh of his year. God. And so we uh, we made the day trip, and literally the only thing I knew about him was you know he'd been been playing catch for several months at that point, and I cheered him on and read his stories and, and, and stuff like that. But the first time we met in person uh, was was behind the scoreboard at, at the K. And, we play, and it was a hot day, and we had so much fun. Uh, went to the game, him and, him and his wife. We still stay in touch to this day. His name, his, his name is John. His wife is Heather. And his wife caught a foul ball during the game. And we, I mean, we just had, we had so much. It was just a, a fantastic experience. And, and he... Um, he hasn't stopped. He's been playing catch for two years now. 
And uh, he just says catch every day. He carries ball with him wherever he goes and all is always looking for people to connect with. And his stories are just, just wonderful. I love that. What's the youngest and oldest person you've played catch with? Um, Maybe you guys don't get into that, but I thought you might. I, know, I think two, two is probably the youngest. Um, and he had an arm. I mean, yeah, he was good. I think two is the youngest. Wow. And I've had a couple people over 90 um, cool. that are still still throwing. And um, I've, had, I've had a handful of people over 90. Although I do have one friend in, I think, St. Louis who had a catch partner that was over 100. And very so that's cool. pretty cool. That is very cool. So do you think you'll pen a follow-up book? Uh, I'm not going to put any pressure on myself to do that. No, um, sure. I, I really, um, I, I mean, I'm enjoying the experience. Yeah. And really, I, you know, it's uh, 2024 is, is set up to be a, a pretty stressful year with it being an election year and everything. And, and, and our nerves are on edge and we seem to be culturally quick to be angry and judgmental. And so I am doing everything I can this year to get literally as many people as I can to, to play catch. And, and um, it is just an activity that, that brings people together that, that encourages trust. And I think, I think we need that literally from coast to coast. I think that's fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing what you're doing. I hope you'll come back with a follow-up whenever you're ready. Again, no pressure. Oh, anytime. And and give us just an update on what, what's been happening and tell people where they can go right now to follow you as an author and to get this book. Uh, easiest way, uh, you can re reach out to me, ethanbryan.com. I, I write on my blog still every now and then. Uh, if you want to play catch or you just want to talk about it more, uh, send me an email, want to play catch at gmail.com. All right. Sounds great. Thanks so much for your time, Ethan. Be sure you're following along at runradio.net.